So circumcision goes back a long way, um, you know, back to the ancient Egyptians. That's where circumcision really got its, its feet in the ground, so to speak. Um, but throughout time, we've seen reiterations of that in different religions, different cultures. Um, in the States, it certainly became more popular in the World Wars, and that was for infection risk, to minimize infection risk in soldiers going to fight. You know, if we look at it from a worldwide perspective, probably about 30% of the population receive circumcision. The majority of that population is going to be Muslim. It's almost 100% that the Muslim communities will, you know, um, seek out circumcision for their newborn males. In the rest of the world, not nearly as common. Certainly in the States, those rates are also higher than most other places in the world. Um, the rates of circumcision have seen declines and also increases over the, over the last several decades within the States. But um, currently, we're probably about 50 to 60% of all newborn males in this country are circumcised. And the majority of that, it's gonna be for traditional religious or cultural reasons. The current guidelines put out by the American Academy of Pediatrics here in the United States are currently recommending that circumcision be performed. Um, in the 1990s, they had flip-flopped, so they weren't recommending it. Back in the 80s, they were. Back in the 70s, they weren't. So we've seen changes in opinion over the time, um, over the, the, certainly over the last several decades. And with that, we've seen changes in the rates of circumcision in this country. There have been some very good studies out of some of the African countries showing that the rates of circumcision decrease the rates of HIV transmission or, or the um, AIDS. There is also some data to support that in children less than a year of age, um, there are benefits in terms of reduction in the, in the risk of urinary tract infections in that age group. So the cons of circumcision would be related to the procedure itself and then also some perceived um, negative effects of, of performing the circumcision, which we don't have good data to support. Certainly the cons of the procedure itself, there's a risk of infection, there's a risk of bleeding, um, poor cosmetic result. Um, so there are complications that can happen as a result of the procedure. Now we're much better at having informed discussions with the families. When they come in to see me, it's not me just saying, oh, I think circumcision is the best because that's what the current guidelines would recommend. But we're having much more thoughtful discussions with, with all parents about the potential risks, you know, what, what are the benefits of circumcision, um, and when I talk about risk, it's risks of circumcising versus uncircumcising. Um, and so I think it's a much more of a shared process or a shared decision-making that we go through with the families, and that traditionally wasn't the way it happened. <laughs>